I take calls, snap photos and snap up deals. I make a bit of money, read about money, make plans and remind myself of my plans. I edit videos and find my way all at once. Track habits, listen to wise people, watch highlights, vacuum the house, get my groceries and tell Beth I love her. Sometimes. So I got a new iPhone 14 Pro to replace my old iPhone 11. And yes, it is extremely sexy. Yes, the dynamic island is very, very cool. And yes, I am very glad that I got a beautiful case from Pitaka because I've dropped this thing literally 14 times since I got it. But here's the problem. I feel like with every iOS iteration, with every app update, it becomes easier and easier for us to get distracted by these horrendously satisfying devices. So in this video, I want to share some of my favorite apps Apps, but also how I have my overall phone set up to mean that I can multiply the things I can do with my time using my phone rather than have my phone feel like it's sucking my already kind of limited 16-ish waking hours a day. And I hope that you can take away a few pointers, a few things that you could do with your own setup to enhance it and just make overall your phone really work for you rather than the other way around. Alrighty, so here is my shiny new iPhone. So shiny, you can see me in it, just about. Uh, yeah, this is my lock screen currently. So in terms of font, I've gone for this really simple, plain Apple font. I like the simplicity of it and the minimalist kind of look. Obviously with new iOS 16, you can customize your lock screens. I currently just have one really simple lock screen. I really like this effect. Then in terms of widgets, you'll see I just have a calendar widget. I like this calendar widget just because it just quickly and easily allows me to see, okay, this is what's going on with my day. And then in terms of notifications, you'll see that I often have reminders at the bottom. I'll go into how I use reminders when we actually get inside the phone. But yeah, I need to buy my dad a birthday card. Alrighty, so let's go inside. Face ID, you can instantly see the dynamic island, which is cool. So I have gone like on an overall layout perspective for a combination of some widgets. As you'll see, I have this sort of general widget. I then have the photos widget and another widget here, which I'll talk about shortly. I've gone for like a very folded approach this time and I'll go into why in just a second. And then some random apps and other widgets on this last screen and that is it. So it's a three page iPhone setup, which is very different to my last iPhone, which had about 20 pages of apps gone for a way more kind of minimalist clean look before running you through the room ah it's all good got a pitaka case on i want to quickly tell you about today's sponsor pitaka who make these beautifully slim and light phone cases. My iPhone 14 Pro is a stunningly beautiful device. That's why we spend so much money on these pieces of kit. And so I really hate like massive bulky phones that ruin that aesthetic, which is why the Pitaka case is as thin as a credit card. You can literally feel the quality when you run it through your hands. But best of all, it's still strong enough to protect my phone from the regular scuff, scrapes, scratches, bumps that I put it through on a very daily basis. It has a 3D textured surface that makes it amazing to hold, made from lightweight but durable aramid fiber. And it also has a raised lip right here that's just the right size to protect my phone cameras, and it's MagSafe compatible, so that gives you super fast wireless charging even through the case. The button cutouts are super sleek, and the rounded edge on the front side looks and feels elegant. I personally went for the Rhapsody design, which has this subtle kind of detailing on it, but they have a number of different designs, all of which I think look pretty sleek and minimalist. And last but not at least when your phone case arrives, it comes in recyclable and biodegradable packaging, which is a complete game changer. Phone cases so often come in loads of plastic, so that is awesome. So yeah, go through the link in the description to get your own Pataka case now. So what makes it onto kind of this first screen when you unlock your phone? I would say I just basically have all of my most used apps. Google Maps is absolutely my preferred map app. Although Find My Friends, like Find My now as it's known is kind of handy. As you'll see, like I don't actually have the Find My app on any of these screens. I basically always just go, where is Beth? And she comes up with her location. I still use the native Apple podcast app. <laughs> I'm not sure it's that great, honestly, but it's the one I've always used. And like, I have all of my shows saved in here. And so I think just changing to another one is something I just kind of can't really be bothered with. So I'm pretty happy with this for now, honestly. I listen to tons of podcasts. And along those lines, I also have Audible on here. 
have a bunch of audiobooks in my library that I am either partway or wholly through. And I've got to say, maybe some people will disagree with me on this, but I don't really get why more people don't listen to audiobooks and podcasts like way more than they do. For me, on my way to work, I have maybe 45 minutes, an hour, a few times a week when I'm in the gym or on a run. And that really allows me to like listen to about a book's worth of content a week. That's like 52 books a year that I'm able to read just by listening to audiobooks and podcasts if you take them as equivalent to audiobooks. It's a huge amount of learning and reading that I'm able to do. And that is just otherwise kind of wasted time. Yes, I absolutely do think we should be meditating with headphones out, enjoying the world, soaking in the moment. But that takes like 10 to 15 minutes, but we do have a whole load of dead time that I think you can really utilize effectively by listening to audiobooks and podcasts. Then in terms of news apps, I basically have two, the BBC News app and the FT. So the BBC News app is kind of my go to for just general news, what's going on in the world. The FT is also a huge news source for me. Obviously in my job, it's kind of important that I have some sense of what's going on. So I really like that they have this kind of like story look at the top. So for me, I'll often go into the company's one, I have a bunch of stuff like law that it's kind of easy for me just to tap into and have a quick look through what's going on in the world of law from a kind of financial business perspective. Super helpful. Next up we have Trello. So as you will know, if you have watched any of my videos, Trello is literally my baby where I keep all of the stuff that I need to do. So I have a Menos to-do list in here. I have a YouTube business to-do list. I also have like rough YouTube video ideas that I'm working on. Basically, I keep like just general kind of high level YouTube video ideas in here and general to-do lists in the different compartments of my life. If you are interested in finding out more about how I use Trello, again, just a quick plug for my Trello course on Skillshare. I think it's super helpful introduction to how I use Trello. Um, and as you can see, the biggest thing I love about Trello is just the ability to like really quickly and easily create cards for things that you want to do and then categorize them by importance. I just find it super intuitive, really easy to see on a high level, just like what is going on in my life. I have all of these different cards, all of these different lists. Then onto my habit tracking app of choice, the done app. I just decided to strip this back, really pair it back and kind to make this something that I actually use. The Done app also has this really cool widget that I've added to the second page. I really love this because whenever I go on my phone, I just sort of scroll to go here to one of my apps. This widget is just kind of a great visual reminder of like, okay, I need to be careful of how many takeaways I'm eating this week, or I need to make sure that I do another workout tomorrow. Okay, and then I also have just like a bunch of my finance apps in here. These are all my savings accounts, free trade, which I use for investing. Also Masterworks, who have been a sponsor on the channel. I use that for art investing. I have a savings account, another savings account. Uh, this is my YouTube bank account. QuickBooks, which I use for all of my accounts. Stripe, which is all of the payments I take through my personal website. A bunch of other accounts. Okay, final homepage app that I think does merit a mention is the Notes app. So the Notes app is basically what I use when Whenever I'm like listening to an audiobook or a podcast and there are ideas, I will just really quickly jot down. And this is where the dynamic island is kind of cool. You know, if I'm listening to this audiobook, for example, I just pop it up there. And then in the notes app, I can pause it just like very quickly and easily, flick between the two apps, and it's kind of seamless. So that's basically all of the apps on my homepage. And then the last thing is I just have this widget here. I then have this like calendar view here, a bit more fulsome, so I can see, okay, like what's going on today. I just find this widget is a really easy, kind of like quick view of what's going on in my life and I do find it is generally pretty good at suggesting things that are probably going to be helpful. Then along the bottom here I have a pretty generic suite of apps. I guess the only two things worth mentioning is one I am a big Google Chrome user and then second I have all of my emails. All of my email accounts are synced into the Apple Mail app and like one of my favorite features just to highlight in case you didn't already know when you are sending an email in the new mail app you can delay sending. So if you press and hold on the send icon it comes up with these options and I can say okay let's send this at you know 9 p.m tonight or send later and choose a time really useful feature especially when I'm at work on my work phone I really love that so yeah on the second page of my home screen I have eight folders at the top for the different areas of my life like different types of app and I've got to say like I have found this a huge development I think just having this like slight friction that when I come to this second page just having the barrier to entry of it like being in my socials folder where I have to then say 
Okay, I'm gonna go into socials. Okay, trigger the mind to say social media equals am I supposed to be doing this right now? Or is it actually gonna be a drain on my time? Having them in folders just really forces me to reflect on that kind of like decision of how I'm gonna use my time in the moment, just that tiny bit more. And I have honestly found it's made a huge difference to how I use my phone. Then coming back to this screen, I do have this photos widget right here. And I absolutely like wholeheartedly recommend this. So as you know, I am super keen on productivity, making sure you're not being distracted throughout the day. But it might be a good idea just to take a 30, 60, 90 second break. And I find that coming onto my phone, literally swiping right and having like some kind of wholesome photo or even one of these like little videos that Apple puts together, it just kind of gives me like something to do. It takes my mind off work. I like watch this and think, oh, wow, that looks great. Like such a nice memory. It just cheers me up for the day. And I can just then come back, put my phone down and I can just get back to work. Coming into like noteworthy apps, content creation, I'd probably mention ClickUp, like it is a pretty good project management app, kind of like Notion. I use this literally just for fully scripting my videos, my editors have access. The only other app I think is probably worth mentioning that's new since my last setup is Adobe Lightroom. Now I held off getting Lightroom for ages because it is pretty expensive. Now Canva is an incredible app for designing things. Beth and I both still use it in our business, but as a pure photo editing app, Lightroom is an absolute beast. Like I really cannot recommend it highly enough. I edit all of my thumbnails in here. It is so worth it. In terms of Menos, Shopify is the app that we use to power our entire website and everything in our business. It's a pretty awesome app to power a business. And I would also mention Notion. So Notion is the tool that Beth and I use to record like everything we do in our business. It's just a super helpful place. And the other thing on here that's probably of interest is the home app. So creating a smart home. I think I might do an updated smart home video. So let me know if like you'd like to see what I've done since my last one. There are a ton of apps in here which you basically need to connect to the different brands of products that we have, but they all link into Alexa. Alexa, turn on Beth's desk art. <laughs> okay. She even understands you when you speak like an idiot. Final apps that I want to mention on this page are my fitness app. So RunKeeper is the run app that has like all of my data in here, 376 activities tracked. And the other app is this interval timer app. I find the interface on this super clean and easy to use, but highly effective. Then coming on to this last page, just a few highlights. Like one password is now the app that I use to store all of my passwords. And then also have this big Apple reminders widget. Uh, I just find it super handy. Reminders also got like a huge refresh in this iOS. At least I hadn't realized how good it was before. So now Beth and I, for example, have a shared shopping list. And then I also have a to read list. I think this is kind of a cool place just to keep like little lists. And I think the ability to share them with other people is super cool. And then last but not least is a pretty recent discovery for me and it's end. So this is like one of my new favorite and probably most used apps. It basically creates like soundscapes to match whatever you're doing. So for me, like I really struggle to focus when there's background noise. So I put it on this mode, which is focus mode. And it basically plays like these focus sort of like tunes, noises. And with my AirPods Pro, like the noise canceling on those, it blocks out any sound of someone else like talking and on a call when I'm in the office and just makes me like completely in the zone. They also have this other mode, which is relax. They have sleep, they have move, which like times the music to your movement. So as like the phone feels your movement, it times the soundscape that you're listening to, to your movement, which is pretty awesome. They also have this spatial orbit mode, which is new to go with like Apple AirPods Pro. So you can listen to a soundscape as you move. And as you move your head, it kind of like rotates the sound around you. It's pretty cool. One of my other favorite features about this app is the ability to create like a deep work timer so you see they have like scenarios here i can go into deep work which will then play some like focus tunes for me and i can go how long do i want to do this for so i want a 60 minute deep work session i press start it puts me in the zone it plays this tune for 30 minutes and i then put my phone down and don't do anything with it and I then do have a ton more apps on my phone that I just don't use that regularly, so I don't need them on my home screen. This has been a huge improvement for iOS. I also absolutely love how easy it is now to search for apps, so I don't need as much on my home screen, because if I can't find something, just quickly go in here, 
Admiral, for example, which is my insurance provider, bam, and I am in. I think my top five highlights from my new iPhone setup. Number one, folders. I honestly think it has made a huge difference to how I use my phone. Number two, I think the photos widget, like this photo is of me and my two Texan friends. I'm like, oh, that's so wholesome. And I then also like send it to the person that it's of with me. And it just makes them think, oh, Liam like thought of me today. That's really cute. Number three would be the done app widget. Just having that visualization on how am I doing this week with all of my habits. Four has got to be Endel, my new kind of favorite like focus app. Just listen to endless soundscapes and don't get distracted by noises going on around me. And number five, without a doubt, Pitaka. Go to the link in the description to get your own Pitaka case. Honestly, I cannot get over how light and just good it feels in my hand, like satisfying as like how sleek and beautiful this thing is. So honestly, do really highly recommend. So yeah, that is my productive iOS 16 iPhone 14 Pro setup. And I really hope you've enjoyed this. Let me know if you have, again, any top tips for how I could improve my setup further. Let me know what you thought down in the comments of this video. I always read your comments. I love to hear from you and I will speak again very, very soon.